All right, so here we are um, using an equilibrium constant to predict the direction of spontaneous reaction. So here's our reaction. It's the formation of hydrogen iodide from hydrogen gas and iodine gas. Uh, they give us the, the equilibrium constant for this reaction. And you notice that the equilibrium constant is Kp because it's referring to uh, partial pressures of gases. Right, these are gases here. Now, if it were a solution, uh, it would be perhaps Kc. But we learned in the chapter that you can interconvert between Kp and Kc uh, pretty easily. Okay, so we have the Kp, it's 0 0.37. And it says that these reaction vessels are filled uh, with our reactants, hydrogen and iodine and the reaction begins. And so we're supposed to predict the changes in the compositions um, that the engineer should expect. So we have three different scenarios, reaction vessel A, B, and C. Here are our compounds for each reaction vessel, and these are the given pressures in each scenario. So we're supposed to say, well, what's going to happen given these pressures of these compounds? Is the the what's the expected change going to be? An increase in the pressure of H2 or a decrease in the pressure of H2? How are we supposed to find that out? Well, when we are talking about chemical reactions and when you see this word predict in context of a chemical reaction, which way it's going to go, that should immediately make you think of reaction quotient. So Q is the reaction quotient. Now, the reaction quotient, or Q, is the same ratio of the equilibrium uh, expression. It's, it's the same. It gives the same value. But what it will tell us is, if our given pressures or concentrations of reactants and products plugged into uh, a reaction quotient gives us a value that is less than the given Kp, then what does that mean? Well, that means that the reaction is going to be push to the right to produce more product. If Q, the reaction quotient, is equal to the given Kp, which is that, then that tells us that the reaction is at equilibrium. If Q is greater than Kp, then that tells us that the reaction is going to be favored to the left and more reactants are going to be produced. So let's let's work this out and let's see how, how we can make sense of this. Okay, So let's do a scenario a reaction vessel A first. So if I were to write the equilibrium uh, constant expression, right, for this reaction, what are my products? I only have one product, hydrogen iodide, and my reactants are H2 and I2. So if I were to write the equilibrium constant expression, it would look something like this. Kp is equal to the partial pressure of Hi and this is raised to the second power because of the stoichiometric coefficient here, a 2. Okay, So it's products over reactants, so partial pressure of H2. And what's the coefficient there? It's a 1, and same thing as a 1 here, times the partial pressure of I2. Okay, Now, I used P, partial pressures, because... We, are, we have a Kp here. We don't have a Kc. Now, if, if this were given like that, Kc, then I would use concentration of Hi to the second power over the concentration of H2 times concentration of I2. Okay? Simply because how those measurements were taken. But this Kp tells me that these measurements were taken as partial pressures. So I just write the equilibrium constant expression like this. Okay? So now, let's consider what we have. We are given the Kp. The Kp is 0 0.37. So I know that at equilibrium, at equilibrium, um, the partial pressure of this, our product, divided by the product of the partial pre pressures of our reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients equals 0 0.37. That's the equilibrium constant for this reaction at this temperature. 
Okay. So I'll write this again. Is that whatever, whatever that equilibrium of partial pressure is divided by whatever this equilibrium partial pressure is and this one is going to be 0 0.37. So now let us do this for each reaction vessel and see if the reaction quotient that we come up with, the value for the reaction quotient is greater than, equal to, or less than the given Kp. Okay, so let's look at reaction vessel A. The pressure of Hi is 1.44. So we take this equilibrium constant expression, we, we write the reaction quotient the exact same way, except we're going to solve for Q. Okay, reaction quotient is equal to 1.44, and that's squared, divided by what's H2? 4.21. And I2 is 4.13. 4.21 times 4.13. So the reaction quotient is equal to, let's see what this is. It comes out to be 0 0.119. Okay? And there aren't going to be any units here, so... Let's just omit the units. And so our Q, our reaction quotient, in this reaction vessel, at this moment in time that these pressures were measured, the reaction quotient is 0.119. So what do we do? Well, we compare it to the given Kp from the equilibrium constant expression. If this reaction, and let me write the reaction again, the reaction is H2, plus I2, and this is reversible reaction. Okay, here's our reaction, and these are gases. I just didn't write G. If this reaction goes to equilibrium at this given temperature, this is the equilibrium constant. Okay? But at the moment in time that these pressures were taken, this is the reaction quotient. So we say, is this reaction quotient greater than this, less than this, or equal to this? 0.119 and 0.37. So I'm looking, Q is less than 0 0.37. 0 0.119 or 0 0.12 rounded is less than 0 0.37. What does that mean? We have two little products, and the reaction is going to shift to produce more products, which means the reaction is going to go forward and produce more products in, in the forward direction, in this direction, okay? And that kind of makes sense when you're looking at it. If this number is too small, how can I make the number larger? Make that larger, the value in the numerator. Well, what is in the numerator? Products. Remember, the equilibrium constant expression is products over reactants. So if I make this number larger, which is my product, then I can increase this value to get it closer to that. Okay. So this means that the reaction is going to shift to the right in this direction, in the forward direction, and my reactants are going to be consumed and more product is going to be made until this finally reaches 0.37 and then and then the forward and reverse reactions will be happening at the same rate, okay? So, what will happen? Let's fill this in. Well, what's my, what's my product? Hydrogen iodide. So that means that I should expect an increase in the change in pressure of HI because more product will be made and my reactants would be consumed. Now let's do B. It's the exact same reaction. Exact same reaction. I'm going to erase this. Let's do B. Let's find the reaction quotient. And our given concentration at this moment is 
ATMs of HI, 2.85. Because of the stoichiometry, I need to square that. Divided by uh, 4.75 times 4.65. Okay, let's see what we get here. When I do this one, I get 0 0.368 all rounded to 0 0.37. So this rounds to 0 0.37. When I compare that to the equilibrium constant for this reaction, what K is at equilibrium, or this ratio is at equilibrium, look, they are exactly the same. This is equal to this. And so what that means is this reaction uh, at this moment in time in reaction vessel B is already at equilibrium. There will be no net change in the concentrations of products or reactants because it's already at equilibrium. It's not going to be shifted to the right or to the left. The reaction is still going on. This is still being made and this is still being made, but at equal rates. Okay, so there's no net change in their pressures once it has reached equilibrium. So, because this reaction is at equilibrium, this is equal to that. The reaction quotient is equal to K. No change. No change in any of my substances, the pressures. And looking at reaction vessel C, 2.88 ATMs. So the reaction quotient, or Q, is equal to 2.88. Have to square that. Divided by 3.48 times 3.40. Let's see what we get. In this situation, I get 0 0.701. We can round that to 0 0.70. And... When I look, when I compare the reaction quotient to the equilibrium constant, this is greater than that. So when Q is greater than Kp, then that means that the I have too much products. The pressure of my products is too great, or this value in the numerator is too large. Okay, So in order to make this smaller, I can decrease this, the pressure of my products, and increase this, the pressures of my reactants. So that means that the reaction is going to favor the formation of reactants. So, so this reaction, instead of going in this direction like it did before, instead, there's going to be a net uh, shift in the left direction or the reverse direction. Okay, so that means that while I'm still going to be making hydrogen iodide from hydrogen gas and iodine gas, it's still going to be going in the in the in this direction. I'm going to have more hydrogen iodide decomposing to form this and this because it has not yet reached equilibrium. So the rate of this reaction in this direction is happening much faster than the reaction going in the other direction until equilibrium is reached and then, and then they will both be going at the same rate okay but right now this reaction in the reverse direction is favored and so because uh, the formation of reactants is favored what that means is my reactants here i should expect an increase in the pressures of those and a decrease in the pressure of my product